Hey, I'm Nick Bayer, and welcome to Pocket for Wednesday, the 11th of May. Today on the show, infinity is a lie, a dolphin steals the spotlight, and war is hell. Except for in video games. Roll the titles! All right, here's what's been making headlines. And first up, Disney are done with Infinity. The company announced overnight that they're canceling the toy-based Disney Infinity series and discontinuing their self-published console games business. There has been annual releases of Disney Infinity titles since the series started in 2013, and those games will receive their final updates in June. But Disney aren't a company to do things in halves, which is bad news for developer Avalanche Software. The Utah-based studio responsible for Infinity's development will be closed down and all 300 odd staff will be let go in the process. Next up, and Konami is making money off mobile. Which I just say excited because there's three M's. When the company announced last year that they would be dropping AAA game development following the release of Metal Gear Solid V, they copped what I would call a metric buttload of backlash. Well, since then, everything has settled down in the quote unquote PR nightmare department, and it looks like their decision to shift focus to mobile has paid off. The studio posted fiscal year earnings, which places their total operating profit 9 billion yen, or 120 million Australian dollars, higher than the previous year. Of course, it wouldn't really matter how much money your company makes if you can just hide it all in offshore bank accounts. Which Konami deny? The company has addressed its apparent ties to the Panama Papers, which for the uninitiated is a massive information leak which details where the super rich and often corrupt hide their money. An entity called Konami Corporation Limited is named in the papers, but the Tokyo-based developer is denying that there's any relation between that company and the Konami group which they fall under. Japanese corporate structures can get quite complex, and there are certainly a number of Konami branded entities out there. A short and sweet statement from the Konami we know and tolerate translates roughly to The Konami Corporation, which is posted on the Panama document, has nothing to do with the Konami group. That's all. Moving on, and Mass Effect Andromeda has been officially delayed. After speculation that the game was behind schedule, Bioware Montreal has now released a blog post which confirms they've pushed the sci-fi RPG's launch back to early 2017. However, they did also announce that a vertical slice of the game will be playable at their EA Play conference in LA in June. Microsoft are bringing two community requested gaming features to Windows 10. An update that will begin rolling out today will add an unlocked frame rate option for universal Windows platform games and apps, plus support for AMD's FreeSync and Nvidia's G-Sync monitors. The games themselves will also need to be updated in order to take advantage of these features, so don't get too excited just yet. Forza Motorsport 6 and Gears of War Ultimate Edition will be the first to utilize these updates in the very near future. And trailers for The Witcher 3, Blood and Wine, and Pokemon Sun and Moon dropped overnight. The new Pokemon games look to be set in a Hawaiian-inspired region named Alola and will feature three more disgustingly cute starters. The Witcher trailer offered less information about the DLC itself, but did provide a story teaser and, most importantly, the release date, the 31st of May. And now it's time for Thing of the Day, with today's graphic made by Paulo Deck, who was voted 8th. Hi. Hi. I'm a spandex. Finish him! Let's see how hard it's how Stop me! Alright, well, now it's time for Thing of the Day. Thing of the Day! The wildlife in Assassin's Creed Black Flag played a huge role in making the game world feel real and alive. Unsatisfied with a background role, one creature decided it wanted to take a shot at being front and center. Let's investigate. Hi. Hi. I'm a spandex. Finish him! Let's see a half hug. It's half hug. Stop me! Alright, well, now it's time for Thing of the Day. Thing of the Day! I'm joined now by Goose to discuss our talk through. Thanks for coming. No, thanks for having me. Do you like the feel? I do. Touch it's it like, again. It's like a couch. Well, it is a couch. It's actual couch. Uh, but we're not here to talk about couch. We're here to talk about Blindly Fumblin's talk through topic, which is a big one. Blindly Fumbling says, I wanted to say, after Spec Ops The Line and Valiant Hearts, that war games were growing up. But that Battlefield 1 trailer left me utterly cold. The horrors of the Great War seemed like they might escape the glorious and grandizing of war in video games, except maybe the Vietnam War. I could see WW1 making a good gritty VR experience, but am I asking too much to expect AAA first person shooter developers to be a bit more tasteful in their subject matter? Mmm. Yes. Goose. 
are, are we are we are we treading on hallowed ground here? Yeah, I, I saw this trailer and initially I was sort of blown away by the spectacle of it, mm. but it did raise the question: Is going back to that and you know stylizing it, adding white stripes as the soundtrack, is yeah. that going a bit too far? But then I, I don't know where I really sit on this because at the same time it's been so long since that war. It's sort of like it's I'm always the least fresh. It's the least fresh. Therefore, you know, is it one of those things that like if something's more current, you've mm. got to be more respectful. But the longer and it's, it's tragedy plus on. time equals comedy. Equals comedy. Battlefield One is going to be a joke. It's not a comedy. Game. Yeah, there was talk. Like I saw when it got announced, people talking about it being alternate history. Sorry, style. alternate. Yes, uh, that's and, what it feels and like. And it's not really an alternate history game, but it's certainly not based on a true story. No, like the war happened, but the, you're not going to be playing as a soldier in their actual experience because yeah. otherwise that would be like a two-minute game. And from from the, all the looks of the trailer, it's going to be like they're going to add as many features to old-fashioned weaponry and vehicles and everything. So you're gonna have zeppelins, but you're gonna have them with like special bombs that drop out of them, or you're gonna have tr trench shovels that also can transform yeah. into like, I don't know, some form of battlefield weapon, and they're gonna stylize it heaps. That is that is interesting that you say that because something else that Blindly Fumbling said, because uh, it was quite a big question, so I'll bring up points throughout. But one of the things uh, was that trench warfare mm. destroyed Europe uh, because tanks hadn't been invented to allow for rapid offense movements. So you know everyone was in trenches and stuff. Tanks came around near the end of World War One, mm -hmm. uh, and planes were brought in to sort of counter that. So you go, it was actually basically the end of World War One that those two um, vehicles were a huge part of the war, and yet a big part of the trailer is showing tanks and planes all the time, and so totally. like sexing it up the whole time. Yeah, it, it's funny because if you look at the Call of Duty series, like that began in I think World War Two. Mm -hmm. they, they, they didn't go back as far as World War One. No. But even then, that series spawned from a reasonably respectful level of totally. trying to make war seem terrifying and, you know, there was action, but at the same time, there was respect there. And then you had games like Band of Brothers, which were telling a real story and that sort of thing. So they all had to ground themselves. Mm. Whereas I feel like Battlefield are going to just give themselves the umbrella of World War One. So, yeah. But I, I don't think, you know, they're not going to be accurate to the point of, you know, or there weren't tanks at this point, or there weren't planes at that point. I I think again, it's going to be so stylized and so battlefielded yeah. that it's just going to feel like uh, it's not even going to feel like World War One. I, I think <laughs> video game half of video games are about killing people. Mm. Like the idea that I think that one thing is off limits to me. I, I understand what you're saying, but I go. I actually think it's all off limits. I go like like. Why, why are we playing any games where war is something that is not treated with, you know, this war of mine levels of this is horrible and all, all of it is horrible? Yeah, if you're going to draw a line in the sand at World War One, well then it's sort of disrespectful to every other war that someone has died in. People I, are dying yeah. regardless. I think that, like, all war games are inherently distasteful mm. because it's you, you, you're playing them to have fun and the fun you're having is killing people. And that's not, I'm not, it's not a judgment. Like, I play them as well, but I just go, like, I think that's kind of just how I feel about that. Um, but I think what you said is right, that, that I'm thinking of World War One here as just being like, it's like the Assassin's Creed games, where they use Rome as a setting. And yeah. they just go, that wasn't what it was like. It was part of what it was like, but that's not completely accurate. But we're using this as a jumping off point totally. to tell our own version of a story. And I think that World War One was a horrible war, but most of that war was people sitting in trenches just terrified mm. for weeks at a time, and then running over the top and dying. And you go, that's not a video game <laughs> that, it, that it, people will particularly want to play. There, there are times when video games are appropriate to take you back into a time period and make you feel something. Yeah. Uh, and there are times when it is just entertainment. And I think it's up to our own judgment as to how we, how seriously we take any of them. No one's buying Battlefield One and going, I can't wait to relive World War One, and I can't wait to feel some empathy yeah. towards these soldiers. It's like, no, I can't wait to do a spin in a biplane or. Interestingly, the announcement of this game has been picked up sort of beyond just gaming circles, and so you know, websites like Wired or Forbes have been writing articles about whether or not World War One is the right setting for a game like this. And, and there's a there's a line in in the Wired article that talks about this and says this was the war to end all wars more than any other conflict. It's difficult to separate from the horrors it has inflicted. And so the idea that it was a quagmire of death and disease that turned strategy into slaughter, it has no handy narrative of heroism heroism to layer gameplay atop. Yeah, don't you think that's interesting though that, you know, we're, we're saying that's why World War One is untouchable in terms of turning into a game versus World War Two because just at the 
how easy it was to turn World War Two into a game because you had you know clear cut good guys and bad guys. You had moments of heroism. The bad guys had They'd, skulls all over the. Yeah, uniforms. it was pretty yeah. obvious. They're the bad guys, and so you know you had these moments like D-Day, which would translate into a, a game, and therefore we've accepted that more. Yeah. Versus World War One is just oh, it was so terrible that we can't put a game there. Whereas. You know, there might be more interesting stories. There might be more compelling moments out of World War One, which we saw with you know this war of mine. But yeah. uh, then again, I don't think Battlefield is going to be the game that's going to do that. Yeah, uh, I think that. I don't yeah, think it's untouchable. They have the they have the opportunity to do that. And if we boil it down to a really sort of crass marketing thing, which may be why people have a problem with it, this is a new setting for a game that I don't know how many people want to go back to constantly going back to World War Two. Yeah. And just always fighting Nazis there. This is the opportunity to put you in a different place and kill different people like, yeah. and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because no, I think it's just we're having that sort of gut reaction to that which is that we've you know we've been to these other wars so often and like this is a foreign concept to us to go back and have this sort of action orientated experience in World War One yeah and the and the idea of war and video game shooters itself is kind of a bit absurd because if you boil it right down then you know video games at, shooters at its core are just about sort of how well can I aim this unit at a different unit and have cause and effect. It's just that we've chosen war to be the way we experience that yeah. that mini that game or that mechanic. Yeah, happening. exactly. To bring it back to the core question here, should we expect more from AAA developers when it comes to this? I do expect more, but I don't expect I don't expect it to more. happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like yeah. I want that. <laughs> I don't think that that's going to happen. And unless the gaming community proves us wrong and takes games like you know, Valiant Hearts, and makes that as big a seller as Call of Duty, hmm. then there's no real incentive for, you know, publishers to actually change their minds about that. All right, but, but that's what we think. What do you guys think about that? Do you think that World War One is not something we should be looking at in games, or do you think, you know, along our lines where you go, it, if it's handled well or if it's handled badly, at the end, it's a fictional version of a video game, and it's not really very fictional. Very fictional. Seen. Very, very, <laughs> very fictional. Uh, all right, and while you're in the comments, please suggest a talk through topic for tomorrow, and stay on the internet and check out Good Game on Facebook, YouTube, and iView. Want to meet fellow Pocketeers? Then join the Pocketeers Facebook group and Steam group. Please join the Pocketeers Facebook group because at the time of recording this morning, we're at 1,885 members or something. So we're only like 100 members away from 2,000. I think that would be very impressive. Uh, you can follow Good Game on Twitter at Good Game TV. Follow Pocket at Nick Boy up here at GG at Monkey and at Sam Gate. He's at Goose Mangus, and there are links to everything I just said in the description below. Today's Thing of the Day graphic was made by Paulo Deck. If you've made a thing, please send it in. Until tomorrow, Nick Boyer. Goose I'll take the White Stripes doing a soundtrack to any historical event, though. It does sex it up a little bit. Doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Like, if you went all the way back to, like, the Roman times. Yeah. Just, like, a bit of bass. Yeah. Dum, just dum, Genghis Khan dum, going across the, the mountains. Oh, yeah. Seven Asian Army couldn't hold him down. Uh, not Genghis Khan. It's untouchable. Right. We don't talk about no, that. No, we don't talk about the car. No. no. <laughs> the car? Yeah. Tragedy <laughs> plus time, it was gone. <laughs>